This episode is brought to you by Oscar Technology. Look, if you ask the Duke, Oscar Technology brings two distinct advantages to the ServiceNow ecosystem. First, their expert staffers specialize in a single tech and a single region, so you can be sure you have somebody who's intimately aware of your tech needs and the local ecosystem. Second, their ServiceNow recruiters must pass the Certified ServiceNow System Admin exam. Talk about putting your money where your mouth is on expertise. Reach out to Louis Beck or Kayla Rosetta for all your ServiceNow staffing needs. Their contact information is in the description below. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. It is so good to have you here. With the massive amount of attention on the two ServiceNow MVP programs this week, I think it valuable to understand what they are and how you can get there. Let's start with the Community MVP program. This program is focused very much around the official ServiceNow community. While not absolutely about point accumulation, that does weigh very heavily in MVP selection. So let's understand what gets you points. The highest points come from people marking your answers correct. The second highest amount of points is creating new content that users find helpful or bookmark. A bookmark is worth only slightly less than a correct answer. Next comes posts that users flag as helpful. This is worth 25% of a correct answer. Participation in the community is key. I'd bank on spending 30 to 60 minutes per day answering questions to even reach consideration. You need to decide if you wanna answer questions or create new content. I go for the latter. More than one person can mark as helpful or bookmark, so it's more opportunities to generate only slightly less points than a correct answer. Now let's talk about the Dev MVP program. Dev MVP is actually a lot more flexible. How do I know? Because I'm a Dev MVP, but I don't consider myself a real Dev. The Dev MVP program rates much more on the content you generate, regardless of the platform. If you want to go to Dev MVP, you have to go wide and deep. Participate in either the community or the SN Dev Slack channel. It's also critical that you utilize an external platform to create new content. YouTube channels, blogs, or podcasts. The key is you have to be visible as a leader in educating the developer community. For my part, I suspect my YouTube channel and SN Dev Slack participation earned me this distinction. So, so what? You made community or dev MVP, but why should you care? Are there any perks? Yes, there are. Here are some perks that I've enjoyed. Awesome swag. The community MVP program furnished me with a beautiful spring jacket that I absolutely love, as well as a gigantic water bottle, one of these glass trophies, uh, just awesome swag in general. The Dev MVP gives you exclusive access to a private SN Dev Slack channel, which I learned more from last year than all my interactions with Docs. You also have tons of spotlight opportunities. Both programs have professionally produced videos you have the opportunity to be featured in. And both programs feature a super secret benefit that's absolutely ridiculously awesome and I'm totally not allowed to talk about and I'm so bummed about it. But, in my mind, make all the efforts totally worth it. So the fastest way to MVP is to create content. If you can't think of net new stuff to teach people, just talk about the things you've learned yourself. There's times I've done this as well, and it can be just as effective as creating new lines of thinking that nobody's seen. And it's not like any effort's gonna be wasted. Any new content you bring to teach the community new things is valuable on its own, just to increase your presence. It's time consuming and it's difficult, but also within your reach. If I can make Dev MVP, anyone can. I remain yours truly, The Duke.